Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said that any sin can be forgiven except the sin against the Holy Spirit. What is the sin against the Holy Spirit? It is any word that you utter, any word that you utter against the gospel of Jesus. That's the reason why we call them Antichrist. Because they are speaking against the gospel of Jesus on TV. They write articles. They organize events. They hold TV programs, talk shows, discussions, informal discussions to discourage people to believe in Jesus Christ. Someone is trying to accept Jesus in his life, in her life, and here comes the husband or the wife or the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the friend to say, why? Why are you following these people? The sin against the Holy Spirit. In the book of Romans, in chapter 3, there is a revelation that is so strong, a revelation of what the Lord Jesus Christ came to do. And the Bible shows in that passage how from the very beginning of time all have sinned. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It is the truth that no man, no man can escape. Because the Bible is so clear, it says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But then there is a shouting part in that revelation. And that is the area where God wants his church to focus. It says, when you read in verse 2-4, that is verse 24. It says, and are justified by his grace. You see, they are justified by his grace. So, even though all have sinned, those who turn to him through Jesus Christ are justified. This is the good news. This is the gospel. The healing word of God. The good news is that even though all have sinned and are separated from God, those who choose to turn to him are justified. They are made righteous by God himself. In other words, they are reunited, reconnected to the source of life. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm reading this verse this passage of the gospel is because of what I would like to discuss with us this morning. That the good news of Jesus Christ has been brought to us 
to liberate us, to give us liberty, to give us the grace to walk in total liberty, in total freedom. To live and function out of the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. The devil, through religion, is working hard to keep many of us under the bondage of sin. When God wants us to enjoy the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you see, until you, the child of God, begins to function in that light, you will never, never truly enjoy the life that is in Christ Jesus. It will make you to live a religious life where you continually want to please God. You become more conscious of sin than the righteous life in which you've been born. There is so much to discover. So much to know. Hallelujah. So much to know. Now, I would like us to discuss about the sinless life. Because this is a topic that is so confusing, that is so hot in the minds of men. The debate has no end because there is no agreement, there is no solution. Even when the scriptures are so plain, when it comes to sin and to righteousness, what does the word of God say? Hallelujah. What does the word of God say about sin? You see, the reason why we discuss everything that we discuss, because this is a school of life, do you understand? We come here to learn from God. So, we go from level to level, step after step. Discovering the mind of God about your life. And when we are done, you turn a new page, a new chapter. Because now you've been equipped. You know now how to go about life. Praise God. Because sin is what really is holding many back. They cannot move forward. Because of this. They do not know how to live a life in Christ Jesus. Free. Hallelujah. So now, when we talk about a sinless life in Christ. We ought to ask a question. Which is, what to do when you sin? Because it's a fact, that's what I said in the beginning. I said that for all have sinned and fall short of, of the glory of God. But those who choose to come to Christ are justified. Hallelujah. It's better. They are justified. Now, before we can answer the question, because look, sin is a big, big topic. You cannot finish this in one hour because we have less time, do you understand? So it, it is obviously going to be a series. But for today, I would like us to focus on defining what sin is. Do you understand? Because for you to be able to define sin is going to help you to know what sin is and what sin is not. Because a lot of people are suffering 
For the lack of what they don't know. The lack of knowledge. Do you understand? So, the question is, what is sin? Hallelujah. This is beautiful. Now, the Bible says that there are two types of sin. Do you understand? And before I discuss about the two types of sin, in a very simple way, defining sin means, I mean, sin, simply put, defined, is the violation of a principle. Do you understand? We will go into the scriptures. I'm just helping you to have it in mind. That sin is the violation of a principle. It is the violation of the will of God. The mind, the desire, the word of God. In other words, again, sin is... Opposing the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the violation of the gospel. When you go against the only solution that you need. For eternal life. When you oppose that solution brought by God Almighty. Through Jesus Christ. You sin against God. Hallelujah. God. Now, if you put all this down, you will now understand when we go through the scriptures. Praise God. Because it will shock you what the Bible teaches. It is in contradiction with what religion has been teaching us over the years. Hallelujah. Now, I said there are two types of sins. And I would like us to read in 1 John chapter 5 to discover what are those types of sins. Now, the first type of sin has put many of the actions that you call sin in it so two categories of sin do you understand that's what the bible says so first john chapter 5 i would like to read from verse 16 i hope everybody in the studio here has a bible and that those who are watching i have a bible and read it with the hope that the Holy Spirit will help you receive that message. Amen. To heal you. And to heal many. Praise God. Amen. Now, what does the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 16 of chapter 5 of 1 John. says, if anyone sees his brother sinning. A sin that leads to death. Do you see that? I mean, sin is sin. Why would the Bible speak about a sin that leads to death? That implies that there is another type of sin that does not lead to death. Do you understand? Hallelujah. So, it says... If anyone sees a brother sinning a sin that does not lead to death, he should ask God who will give life to those who commit this kind of sin. Hallelujah. Can you stop there and begin to celebrate? <laughs> Praise God. I didn't write it. It's right there. Can you see it for yourselves? 
These are the scriptures. This is the gospel. Wow. And then in the same verse, it says, There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying he should ask regarding that sin. Do you understand? In other words, the Apostle Paul here is saying, if anyone sins a sin that leads to death, no need to pray. Do you understand? But if you see anyone sinning a sin that does not lead to death, you better pray for the person because there is hope. Do you see the difference? The sin that leads to death is unforgivable. But a sin that does not lead to death is forgivable. Two types of sin. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, you need to be aware of this in your mind. <clears throat> because if you're not aware of this, you'll be lost. Do you understand? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 17. Can you all see that verse? Yes. The Bible says, All unrighteousness is sin. That's what Paul is saying. He said, Any unrighteousness, so any wrongdoing, it doesn't matter what you do. Whatever you do that is wrong is sin. Do you understand? It's a fact. Yet, do you see that word? You need to underline it. It plays a very important role. Yet, he says, all unrighteousness is sin. Yet, there is sin that does not lead to death. Hallelujah. Verse 18. We know that anyone born of God does not keep on sinning. Other versions would say does not sin. In other words, the Christian born again in Christ Jesus does not sin. I mean, this is big. And religion does not understand this. It goes beyond human comprehension. How can a human being live without sinning? It's, it's, it's too big. Do you understand? It's, it's too big. The mind cannot understand this. Wow. I mean, is either the Bible is lying <laughs> or it is true. Do you understand? It says, we know that anyone born of God does not keep on sinning. Now, this version is a newer version. But when you go back to King James, the old King James does not say, does not keep on sinning. So they were trying to, you know, they were trying to accommodate the verse because King James makes it very clear. It says, anyone born of God does not sin. You see, it is a statement of fact. No argument. This version is trying to argue, do you understand? It says, anyone who is born of God does not keep on sinning. So, they are implying that, okay, I mean, we are all sinners. You know, he sinned before, so he does not keep on sinning. So, each time he sins, he will ask for forgiveness. No, that's not what King James meant. They took it right from the original translations. It was a fact. Now, this is making us think now what sin really is. Because we have difficulty to accept the King James Version, the King James Rendering, because in our mind, we already have a definition of sin. So that when we read King James, we say, no, this one is wrong. Because I look at my life, I know I told the lie yesterday. 
I had a, you know, a bad thought yesterday. No, this is not possible. Because if this is true, then I'm not born again. Do you understand? But no, the problem is not that you are not born again. The problem is that you have a wrong understanding of what sin is. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why I began by reading 1 John 5 verse 17. To show you that there are two types, two categories of sin. In other words, two categories of violations. There are some that will lead to eternal death. And there are some that will not lead to eternal death, but they could end up taking you there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And that section of sins are forgivable. You can be healed. You can be restored. That's the reason we have an advocate before the Father. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, today, can we just focus on the sin that leads to death? Because it's big. Do you understand? It's big. We need to really, you know, go in detail for you to be established, to know what you shouldn't touch. It, it is a no-go zone. Praise God. This is wonderful. Now, let's begin with Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who teach, who, you know, who began by teaching the disciples not to go there. Praise God. Matthew chapter 12. The sin that leads to death. What is it? Matthew chapter 12. I would like to start from verse 30. You can read the whole chapter to understand what made Jesus to teach about this or to talk about this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 30, Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is teaching and he says, He who is not with me is against me. Talking of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, the leaders of the temple, those guys were always opposing the good news brought by Jesus. So they were against the gospel. They were fighting against the gospel. They became an enemy of God by opposing the gospel. And they even went as far as impacting the government at that time to oppose the gospel and that is what led you know to the change of the name given to the believers in Christ Jesus the Christians the name became a name that identified that sect that's why that name came with a lot of pain to the first apostles in the Bible. Praise God. Jesus is speaking to those who opposed. So in the crowd, you had those who opposed the good news. And you had those who believed the good news. Now Jesus is saying, He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not, he who does not, Assemble with me is the one who scatters. These are strong words. Do you understand? And then he says, therefore I tell you, every sin and every wrong declaration, so the blasphemy, will be forgiven men. Do you understand? But the blasphemy or the sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Do you understand? In other words, 
Anything that you do against the message brought by the Holy Ghost through Jesus will not be forgiven. So you cannot go against the work of the Holy Spirit. Because the one who really, you know, introduced the good news is the Holy Spirit. The one who gets you born again is the Holy Spirit. That's what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the Christian born again is baptized into that Spirit of God. And that Spirit is what? It is the very, the presence of God. So when you oppose the presence, the revealed presence of God, when you oppose it, in other words, when you reject it, whether his manifestation or the message that he brought to give you life, you sin against God. And that sin is not forgivable. Do you understand? It cannot be forgiven. That is why when you go to John in chapter 3, when you read down after verse 16, when you go down, Jesus explains. He says something very striking. He said that those, those who don't accept the Son are already condemned. Even before they die a physical death. As they walk, as they work and sleep and function, they are already condemned. Condemned. So they walk in condemnation unless they get born again. Do you understand? Yes. That's the seriousness of the gospel. So the sin that we are talking about here, that leads to death, is when you oppose the only way to be saved, which is the gospel of Jesus. Do you understand? The will of God for your life. So you reject the only one that can save you. That's what he's talking about here. Praise God. Verse 32. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. So you can insult me. You can beat me. You can do whatever wrong that you do on me. As long as you do it on me, you will be forgiven. Do you understand? Amen. That's what he's saying. So whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Either in this age or in the one to come. Do you understand? Amen. And you see, the Bible says that it, it, is, it is allowed to every man to die once. So until you die, you have that grace to be saved. You can still accept the gospel. But if you die, it is the end. Do you understand? No more grace for you. Grace is for the living, not for the dead. Hallelujah. So you better accept Christ while you still breathe. Because anything can happen anytime. And you find yourself separated from God forever and ever. Praise God. So now Jesus is showing us the sin that leads to death. You should not oppose the will of God for your life. When it comes... Through a man. Or the word is brought so that you can reconcile yourself with God. Accept the gospel. Even when you don't understand, accept. Hallelujah. Now, let us go back to 1 John. I first wanted to show you what Jesus says about the sin that leads to death. So that when you now listen to the apostles... You understand that they were taught by Jesus himself. Do you understand? So, 1 John chapter 3. Now, here John is... He's saying something here. Verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. It says, 
See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Hallelujah. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. Do you see? What we will be. So the hope of the Christian, of the child of God, the born again child of God, the Christian who is born again, the hope that we have is the celestial body. By which we will become fully what God has planned for us to be. Which means, in other words, that you are still in a mortal body, a sinful body. And Paul called it a curse. <laughs> he said, Who will separate me from this body? For I do the things that I don't want to do. What is he talking about? He is talking about things that the flesh makes you do. In violation to God. In violation to your spouse. In violation to your friends. Did you know that when you have a friend, it could be a professional friend, it could be a friend that you've had. We sin against our friends. Do you understand? The friend comes to you and says, please, this secret, don't tell anyone. I promise. You know you're my best friend. Yes. The friend begins to tell you secrets. And you, because this tongue is in control of your life, before you are able to stop it, it has already spoken the secret. So you sinned against your friend. Do you understand? So sin is at different levels. Do you understand? We sin against God. We sin against our mother, our father, our friends. You know, we sin against, you know, everybody. This is beautiful. What am I? Verse 2, right? It says, dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when the Lord appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him make themselves pure. Do you see this? I love this. If you hope in Christ Jesus, you keep yourself pure. And last week, we saw what James said. He said that besides displaying your goodness towards others, you need to keep yourself unspotted. Unspotted from this world. Because this world is full of sin. So, you have a religion given to you as a child of God. And that religion is to keep yourself blameless. To protect yourself. To keep yourself pure. That's what another disciple is saying here. That means Jesus taught them about this. Do you understand? So he says, all who have this hope in him, keep themselves pure. That means they maintain themselves in the gospel. The gospel is the purity that is talking about here. To live a pure life is to walk in the gospel. Do you understand? When, when you walk according to that gospel, you live it, you practice it, you put it to work every day, you are walking pure. That's what it means. Praise God. Verse 4, it says, Everyone who sins, that means everyone who goes against it, against what? The gospel. Do you see? Anyone who sins, who goes against the gospel, 
is breaking the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Do you see? So, when you walk in that sin, in other words, when you walk in opposition to the good news of Jesus, to the gospel, the saving word of God, you are a lawless person. You are in rebellion to God. That's why Jesus said in John 3, he said, you are already condemned. Because you have not yet accepted the gospel. Do you understand? And if you are already in the condemnation, if you die, you will have the same judgment that is reserved for Lucifer and every other fallen angel. And God doesn't want that. That's the reason Jesus came and he died for you. He paid the full penalty for all your past sins, your present sins, and the future sins. So that if you receive him and you sin, you can ask for forgiveness. Anytime. Free of charge. You don't need to fast for it. You just have to be sincere. Do you understand? You have to be willing to change. And God forgives you. He will not wait to see, okay, has she changed? <laughs> no, he gives you free of charge. How wonderful God is. Hallelujah. This is beautiful. Verse 5, he says, but you, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him, is no sin. No one who lives in him will sin. No one who continues to sin has neither seen him or known him. The big one. Dear children, that is verse 7. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. Do you see this? In other words, do not let anyone Cause you to fall away or to sin against God. The one who does not, I mean, the one who does what is right, follow is righteous. So the one who follow Christ, who follow that gospel is righteous. That's what he says. Just as he is righteous, who? Jesus. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Yes. Why? He opposed God. Isaiah said he opposed God. He wanted to be like God. And so he began to tell, you know, the angels that he could see that he's going to take God's place. And they believed him because they saw the marvel that he could perform. So they were led astray by Lucifer. So he sinned right from the beginning. Do you understand? Yes. So the devil is the one who opposes the gospel. And there are men who unfortunately follow the devil by opposing the gospel. And they will be condemned and judged. Hallelujah. Amen. This is wonderful. Verse 8. It says, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. You see, that's what I told you. There are many that think that Jesus' mission was to come to die and be resurrected. No, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And for him to be able to do that, there are certain things that he needed to do. Come to die for you. So he, through his death, you have the possibility to receive salvation. Amen. Do you understand? Hallelujah. And now that Jesus has ascended back to the throne room of the Father, anybody can be saved. Do you understand? But the work is not yet finished. Jesus has to come back. He has to come back. To do a lot of things until the Bible says he gives 
the keys back to the Father, the keys of authority back to the Father, so that the Father can become everything to everyone. Amen. He will become all to all. That is when the mission of Jesus ends, when he gives back the keys to God. And God will take the reign as it was in the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why Jesus came. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. In other words, will walk against the gospel. So you see, when you are truly born again, there is a law inside of you. That will make you to walk in accordance with the gospel. Do you understand? You cannot have the presence of God in you, which is his spirit, and walk against the gospel. It's not possible. Do you understand? So, this sin against the Holy Spirit, which is not forgivable, really is not for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is for anyone who has the chance to receive salvation. Hallelujah. And that is what we're looking at today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, whenever you see the journalist on TV, on the radio, the people in school, in the universities, or at workplaces, you know, speaking lies against Jesus, against the gospel, with the ambition to cause others not to follow Jesus, they are operating against the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? But because of the grace of Jesus, they can be saved. But if they die in that manner, they are lost forever. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. This is wonderful. Verse 10, it says, this is how we know who the children of God are. Now, this is a sign. How do you know that you are a child of God? It says in verse 10, this is how we know who are the children of God? And who the children of the devil are? Anyone who does not do what is right is not of God. Do you understand? So if you do not do, do what is right, you are not a child of God. The question is, what is right? And what is not right? And he has told you what is right here. Do you understand? He said, my children, before you, I put life and death choose life do you understand that is the right thing and those who are sitting in this place have done the right choice do you understand that's what he's talking about so you become righteous when you choose the gospel of Jesus Christ that is what it is all about to be a right individual you need to choose the gospel and walk by that gospel. Praise God. So this is how you know. It is not to check, hey, I told a lie yesterday, so I'm not right. Oh, I need to sanctify myself. No, that's not what he's talking. This one is a small one. To tell a lie is, is a small one. Do you understand? We had um, a service. There is a person who asked, what is the biggest sin? You know, I was... I was, I was marveled because that's a big one. Do you understand? The person asked, you know, among the sins, there must be a big one. Do you understand? Which one is the biggest one? The answer is here. The sin that leads to death. And that's what Jesus said. He said, insult me, mistreat me, you know, speak lies against me. No problem. You will still be forgiven. But never sin against the Holy Spirit of God. Don't sin against the gospel that I brought. Because that is unforgivable. Do you understand? And that's why Jesus was so hard on the leaders of the Jews. He told them that the only sign that I can give you is not the one that you're asking. The only one that I can give you is the son of Jonah. Because that is how 
they can see where they went wrong. Do you understand? And he said that those same individuals to whom Jonah preached will be the ones judging you. <laughs> Why? Because they accepted the gospel of Jonah. But the teachers of the law, the leaders of Jews in that time, rejected that same gospel. So, those who accept the gospel will judge you. That's the reason why you, the born again child, you know, children of God, will judge the world and will judge the angels. Because you chose right. Do you understand? This is wonderful.